In this tutorial, you'll learn how to create three different hover effects for a Squarespace website. Here we are inside Squarespace, and I've created this page here so we can work on hover effects together. Now, the concept of hover effects is very simple. In standard CSS, we need to state what we're changing, what we're changing about it, and what we're changing it to. For a hover effect, we're just adding a specific state. Let me show you exactly what I mean. I'm going to scroll down here so we can customize this button on a hover. I'm going to navigate to Pages, and then I'll select Website Tools, and then Custom CSS. This is where I'm going to add the custom code, and I'll link this exact code in the description below. The first thing we can do here is say SQS Block Button Element, and then we'll change the background to red. I'm going to say exclamation point important to make sure the browser picks up on our code. There we go. We have a red background for a button on our Squarespace website. Now, what I want to do is add the hover state. So I'm going to add a colon symbol and say hover directly after the selector class for that button. Now, when we hover over this button, it will turn red. Now, here's a little Squarespace nuance for you. Notice that this red isn't as bright as it was before. Squarespace applies a hover effect to all buttons on your website that you need to overwrite with code. That will change the opacity back to 1. So you'll need to say opacity 1 important if you're changing the color of a button on a hover. That's just a Squarespace specific thing. And again, this whole code will be in the description below. Now let's see that bright red magic happening. There we go. Pretty awesome, right? Okay, I'm going to go ahead and select save because I need to show you one other important Squarespace nuance here. If you're using a site-wide animation, it can affect the way your hover effect will load. Let's hop into our site styles menu. I'm going to click on accessories and I'll select animations. Here I have it set to none. I can choose fade, scale, slide, or clip, and we're still going to see this button hover color change. However, if I select flex, flex has its own unique animations for buttons and you'll see that red background flashes for a second and then disappears. If you've chosen Flex for your animation, it's going to affect the custom code that you create for hover effects. I do not recommend using Flex animations if you want to create hover effects. Select any of these other options or choose none. Again, do not choose Flex if you want to create your own custom code hover effects. All right, let's navigate back out of our accessories here. We'll select Save and Exit, and I'd love to show you two more tricks for customizing your Squarespace website with your own hover effects. The next trick I'd like to show you is how to create a hover effect for these images here inside a list section. I'm going to remove the code we had before, and here I'm going to type list item, and I'll say IMG. So we're going to target the image inside the list item. That's the selector class I want to use here. I'm going to open up a curly bracket, and I want to say filter grayscale 1. I'm going to turn these images gray. Now, what I want to happen is I want them to go back to full color on a hover, and here's how we're going to do that. We're going to repeat this code in a new line. We're going to say filter grayscale zero, and we're going to add hover after the list item. This is the container the image is in. Now stick with me here. When I hover over the list item, the image will become full color. But notice where my cursor is. I'm over the text at the bottom of the list item. If we move the word hover to be after the letters IMG, after the image itself, we won't get that hover effect when I hover over the item. I have to be over the actual image itself. Pretty cool trick, right? We can apply the hover to the container or the hover to the image. Again, if we apply the hover to the container and not the image inside the container, there we go. That means the hover effect will apply when I hover over the container. Now, to be clear, this image, it has to be inside the container that's getting the hover effect. That's why we're only getting the filter for a single image at a time. All right, let's do one more here. We're going to scroll down to the next section, and we're going to have this image reveal itself on a hover. I've got two ways to teach you how to do this. I'm going to remove our old code, and I'm going to click on a Chrome extension that I've linked in the description below. I'm not affiliated with this Chrome extension, just a fan, but if we click on the Chrome extension, I can quickly grab the block ID for this unique image. I'll copy that block ID, we'll turn the extension off, and I'm going to add that here inside my custom code. Then I'm going to open up a curly bracket and I'll say opacity zero. I'm sure you remember opacity from what we just changed about our buttons. As soon as I said opacity zero, the image has gone away. Now I can add the block ID again and say hover. So when we're in the hover state for this entire block, make the opacity one. And now when I hover over it with my cursor, it'll show up instantly. If you don't want it to be instant, I'm going to add second line of code and I'm going to say transition all to S. 
and this means it's going to take two seconds for the image to appear when I hover over it. A cool addition to your code that can make sure your hover effects are a lot smoother than just that instant transition. You can add this to any hover effect you want, and all it says is that no matter what we're changing about it, make sure that change takes two seconds. Before we call this tutorial a wrap, I'd love to teach you one other technique for hiding that image until we hover over it. I'm going to remove the code, we're going to hop into edit mode, and what I'm actually going to do is add a text block. I'm going to pull this text block over the image, I'm going to stretch it to be the same size as the image. And here I'm going to type hover over this to reveal the image. Let's go ahead and center that text horizontally. And let's go ahead and click on the text once and center it vertically. And one more click, let's give it a background. I'm going to fill it with a solid background color. So now we can't see the image at all. I'll select save and exit. And now if we scroll down to where we were before, there we go. Let's grab the block ID for this text block. It's the top layer, so it's going to be the top block ID showing up in this code here. I'll click on that, toggle the extension off. Let's add that here, and we're going to say on a hover state, make the opacity of this text block zero important. Spelled correctly, there we go. Now when I hover over it, it instantly disappears and we can see the image underneath. Now remember that transition? Let's go ahead and add that in here. We'll say transition all to S and now it'll take two seconds for the text block to disappear and the image to reveal. We covered a lot in this tutorial, so let's do a quick recap. Hover effects work by stating what you're changing, that you're changing it in a hover state, what you're changing about it, and what you're changing it to. It's a basic CSS code, but we're adding the specific state. To change the color of something like a button on a hover, don't forget the Squarespace specific of making sure the opacity is back to 1. If you're using the flex animation style for your website, you need to turn that off or choose a different animation style. Flex animations are not compatible with custom hover effects for buttons. You can get creative with your hover effects and target the container that the content is in. The example we used in this tutorial created a hover effect for a list item that added a filter to the image inside the list item. If you target the state of the container, you can change the content inside. We also covered two different techniques for revealing an image on a hover. During this part of the tutorial, we added the transition property so that the hover effect was a lot smoother than an instant change. This is totally optional and customizable. You'll find all of the codes from this tutorial listed in the description below, along with links to related resources that will help you make Squarespace uniquely yours. If you enjoyed this tutorial, be sure to give it a like and subscribe to my channel to learn more about all the cool things that you can do with Squarespace. Thanks so much for watching, and most importantly, have fun with your Squarespace website.